What up guys, JP coming back at you once again, bring you guys week number 12 in my 365 day movie challenge. This is where I attempt to watch 365 films in just one year's time. We're a little bit behind here, but it's all good. I have the films listed. I have them all separated. I just need to make the videos and edit and upload. I'm just slacking, so hopefully we'll be back on schedule very soon. We're into some technical difficulties as well, but let's continue along here. Week number 12. First up, we have The Abominable Dr. Fibes from the year 1971. I busted open the Scream Factory Vincent Price Collection Volume 1, and I worked my way through that bad boy. I watched all the special features, and The Abominable Dr. Fibes is definitely a highlight of that set. It's the second best film in the set. Uh, I was expecting not to really like it. Just I, I tried to watch it before... And when I say try, I don't mean that I was like watching it and I'm like, nope, nope, I'm not going to watch this. This sucks. Just that, you know, I wasn't really in the mood for what I was seeing early on because it, it opens up in like this weird like musical number and stuff, like this weird set piece. And it just was kind of throwing me off. It looked more like theater or something like that. But if you just get past that point, it's really cool. I love the idea of this mad scientist doctor who's all pissed off because he feels like these people have wronged him and he goes to get revenge, but he doesn't do it by just going and killing them because that's just what a murderer does. But he is a psychopathic murderer. He is crazy. So he devises this plan to kill them all with the plagues of Egypt, the black plagues or whatever they were called and he kind of you know does all these different things to them like boils and rats and bats and uh, death of the firstborn and darkness all these different um, you know uh, I guess they were uh, plagues and he kinda kills them in their own cool little way I really liked it it, it was really cool um, there's a lot of dark dark humor in it that I kind of uh, wasn't sure about it first but it, it blended really nicely it's like this this dry like British humor uh, really cool stuff there I give Dr. Fibes uh, or the abominable Dr. Fibes a 7 out of 10 but now that I'm thinking about it that's what I wrote down but um, I would probably definitely consider bumping up my rating on that after that we have the haunted palace from 1963 also part of the Vincent Price collection uh, now these are sort of running all wacky in my head, all five, uh, six of the movies, um, they're kind of all running together. Uh, but The Haunted Palace uh, was pretty decent from what I remember, probably like the third or fourth best movie in there. Um, you know, some of those uh, films are just, you know, these period pieces and they, if they, I'd say like four of them really don't stand out that much. Uh, compared to Abominable Dr. Fives and Witchfinder General. And Haunted Palace, I think I might be mixing up with The Mask of Red Death. Uh, but both of those were pretty cool. Haunted Palace, I give a 7 out of 10. Alright, moving on here, we have Leprechaun 2 from 1994. Over St. Patrick's Day, I decided to do a little Leprechaun mini marathon. I skipped right over the first one, went right to Leprechaun 2, and man, I really, really like Leprechaun 2. There's a few problems with it. It has sort of spotty acting with the Bridget character, uh, but Morty, man, Morty steals the show. I love that character. He's such a sleaze ball who's just out for the money, do anything to sort of uh, swindle and scam and hustle his way to that dollar, dollar bill, y'all and it's just great to watch he reminds me of like a combination of like multiple people that I've met in my life that that sort of all like sort of accumulate into like Morty like this character uh, and he's, he's so well done uh, the leper there's some good leprechaun action in there Cody's sort of a likable character overall it's just it's just a pretty solid leprechaun film uh, I know people are kind of hit and miss on the Leprechauns. Most people don't like them, but some people like them like me, and I'm, I'm one of those people that like them. Uh, Leprechaun 2, 7 out of 10. Then we have Leprechaun 3 from 1995. This is my favorite and has always been my favorite in the series. Uh, even if you are not crazy about the first Leprechaun, maybe even the second Leprechaun, maybe you've seen Leprechaun in the hood and you're just like, I will never watch another Leprechaun film again. Don't do that because Leprechaun 3, I feel with my experience that I've even heard people say, you know, I don't like the Leprechaun films, but Leprechaun 3 is pretty solid, which it is. It's, it's, it's the best of the Leprechaun films. Like, if you take all the elements to make a good Leprechaun film, 
part three is that the characters are well developed and interesting well written likable unlikable uh, the magic stuff is on point the mythology of the leprechaun is on point uh, there's some decent gore that's on point uh, just cool deaths and just it, it's it's just a pretty well done story honestly they're a little spotty acting with the uh, girl character as well but it's uh, much improved from part two uh, leprechaun 3 is the best leprechaun film and I give that one you might think it'd be crazy but 7.5 out of 10 is good shit I love leprechaun 3 Moving along here, we have Leprechaun Origins from 2014. I kind of capped my Leprechaun Marathon off with Leprechaun Origins because I'd never seen it before. That's right, I skipped part one. I hella skipped part four. Didn't go into the hood at all. Like I said, skipped space. But I went to the Origins, I guess, which is complete bullshit. I was watching this shit and I'm like, yo. I thought this was going to be like a prequel or like a remake. Like, it, it's just its own film. Like, you could have called it like Monster in Ireland and it would have had no connection to the Leprechaun films. Um, that said, it's honestly not as bad as everybody says. It's, it's like an average creature feature and I give it slightly above average for it having sort of a decent cinematography at times where like some of the shots in, in the Irish landscape is pretty cool uh, I will say that the leprechaun itself looked pretty awful and they did this like blur effect when the leprechaun was on screen to like make it scary but really what that effect is that blurred out look it's to hide a bad makeup job or a bad creature that they design bad bad effects uh, that's what that uh, that's what that's there for. I 100% I, I believe that that's why it's there. Um, but you know, honestly, like it's not that bad. I give it a 5.5 out of 10. And finally, for this part, guys, we have 10 Cloverfield Lane. This film was really really cool. I went to the movies and saw it, and uh, it was it was. Decent, you know, I was really really into it early on. I thought John Goodman's performance was Outstanding uh, they, they set up this whole dynamic where you're like, okay, is he uh, just a eccentric sort of crazed doomsday prepper or is he like lying or is there really a Attack or is it not really attack or is this guy in on it? Or is this guy not in on it? Or is it just really like everything that John Goodman's saying it is? Uh, you don't know and that's what's really cool about it because you might be surprised at like what actually happens or what actually doesn't happen or what actually does happen, you know leaving it as vague as possible and one problem that I had was just the ending gets very wonky. Wonky is a word that I like to use a lot because it really feels like that describes just sort of this vibe that you don't really like. It's just like it's sort of just getting all over the place a little like ahead of itself or like it's moving in a weird direction. It's just wonky. And uh, yeah, so it, it gets a little wonky at the end. And some people like it, and I, I understand why the end ended like that in terms of just like, if it didn't, you probably would be mad. But at the same time, I feel like you could have done something totally different altogether. Uh, so that actually significantly hurt my rating. Uh, I was looking at maybe like an 8, an 8.5, but it dropped me down to a 7. Uh, so 10 Cloverfield Lane, a 7 out of 10. And with that said, guys, I'll see you guys next time with another week. Peace.